So I have a Unify Gen 2 switch right here. This is their basic Unify USW 24 PoE. This is like the base model 24 port PoE switch on the Gen 2 series. Now this is the one that only has two, oh, on this side, two SFP ports, not SFP plus. So it's not a 10 gig switch, it's just standard one gig SFP, 24 ports, and 16 of these ports are PoE 802.2. 3AT PoE Plus ports. Uh, so this is not their high wattage one, but this is like the base model. This is roughly a little less than $400 for this switch. It's a standard Unify switch, except for it's their Gen 2. So software wise, as of right now, not a lot of things have changed. I say as of right now, because on their website, they do note that yes, they are going to be supporting, or going to in a future release, no date release for this of when or if for sure this will happen, but it does say on their website, they will have layer three uh, support. So they're gonna add more functionality later. Apparently the hardware supports it and the software hasn't caught up, which is sometimes an issue with the Unify software, um, because if you follow some of their other similar models that are on the edge line, they appear to be using a lot of the same hardware, but the Edge OS offers more features than the Unify OS when it comes to certain functionality. But back to the switch. The significant change is gonna be this right here, this little display that they have in the front, and we'll cover that in a second, because first thing I wanna do is take it apart. So it's unboxed and uh, the box is insignificant really. It, a little bit different packaging, nothing. It's still well packaged. Came in this little the kind of fabric-y stuff that they come wrapped in. Uh, it came with some rack gears. Came with the bolts to hold the rack gears on and a couple rack nuts to mount this in the rack. So, uh, and the cage nuts, um, the little squeezy ones. So nothing too significant there in the box. Uh, came with a power cord with a little rubber band to hold it on. So power cord and a book that I'll never read. Uh, I prefer to read it online because this is in like six point font. <laughs> so, I mean, cool that it come, uh, came with this little pamphlet that has some, you know, basic instructions on it. But yeah, it's definitely, make sure you get your glasses out to read it if you're as old as me. But all the screws are sitting next to it already along with the screwdriver. And as I, right away, I wanna see what's inside because a significant change on the Gen 2 switches, uh, besides uh, potentially offering more features at a later date when the software catches up, is these are passively cool. Well, this, this particular model is, I don't know if every one of them is, but they did a lot of cooling changes to make these run cooler. Now we tested this, we've already loaded the firmware, updated it, had it running, plugged a few things in, and yeah, it doesn't really seem to get near as warm as the previous Unify line of switches. And uh, we've had, we have seen out in the field, Unify switches uh, start to overheat. I think we've, for as many as we installed, it's a like super low amount of them, but we have seen them get pretty hot inside of a rack uh, when they're crammed in with some other switches and that caused some problems. But uh, let's take a look at what they're doing here for cooling. So like I said, there's no fans inside of this. We just have a large heat sink here Heat sink, heat sink, two smaller ones. Uh, the SFP doesn't have any extra cooling around it here, but no big deal. Um, heat sink, heat sink for the power supply unit powered right here. The little separate board for the uh, display in the front, but yeah, not much else to it. It's a really simple setup inside and not even spots to plug in fans, no fans at all on it. So, you know, get your standard power uh, plug coming in here. I'll just lift it up here at the back. And then in the front, just take a look at the ports. We have the 24 ports with the ones marked for PoE with the little uh, markings on them, which is the first, uh, see we got one through 16 are PoE. And then these last ones over here are just standard ports, no uh, PoE options. And uh, we'll dive into this as soon as we boot up the switch. So nothing real significant to report in terms of that. It's it still feels really well made. It's metal, not plastic. So this and of course the uh, cover for it, all metal, uh, which probably helps some with the cooling. Slips on pretty easy, taking it apart, not a problem at all. So that wasn't, uh, was not difficult to get off. It did have a uh, little tamper proof thing on one of those screws. So when I peeled it off, had a little Unify thing that came apart when I peeled it off to let people know that you're uh, opening it up, I guess. So, you know, to my no knowledge, that does not void the warranty. They can't do that anymore, um, where they say you can't look inside things you own. If I own it, um, well, if you own it, you pwn it, man. I take it apart. I want to know what's inside many of the things I own. I like to look inside of them and, you know, get the idea of the design. So uh, going together, like I said, pretty simple. I'm going to do this, and then we're going to boot it up and show you that little display on the front because it's pretty neat. So the switch is plugged in, and the first thing you notice is it's booting. 
I like that feature. That it also tells you if it's updating, which we've already got the firmware updated on this. Um, but the first one is the boot, and it's got those circles. So as the circle draws around, we know the switch is getting ready. And almost done. And it's booted. So once you have the switch booted, you can start gathering a little information on it. We only have one thing plugged in, so you can sort them without having to swipe through. We can see that uh, one through 12, this is the one that's plugged in and we can drill down, whoops, down port two is up. So you can see the data flowing back and forth on there. So you can see what it's doing. Link, PoE plus one gig, and you can start going through all the other ones are down. And we can swipe back this way to get through there. We can hit the information. Here's the IP address that it has, the uptime on the switch, hardware info, version number, and we'll swipe back over here. Go here and we can get some throughput stats. What's on port two, load, system load, PoE load, last seven days, and away we go. Swipe back and go over here. We have some options to actually set this. We can change the color. Yeah, well, maybe that's a nice color, nice ubiquity blue. Swipe this way. Status, link, down, etc. SFP information. So pretty basic. And also it does go off after time. So you just touch it once to turn it back on and touching the center does that. The touchscreen works great. It is kind of small, but I'm okay with this. Like it's not, it doesn't need to, to occupy a lot. It just, the display is really nice and it's kind of a nice way to gather some info on a switch. So having this in your rack, being able to swipe over without having to log into the software and kind of see something at a glance. Now it doesn't let you make any port changes. So don't worry about, you're not as worried about security, but obviously there is some security concerns that someone has physical access to your switch. They can obviously do some damage, but there's no worry about them, you know, touching this and someone goofing up a setting because it doesn't, other than they could uh, obviously turn the brightness down on this and maybe cause a headache for you uh, or change the color. Maybe that would bother you. There's not changes that can be made on the switch. Go back here and that's it. There's nothing, nothing they can really change on it. But it's, it's, I really like the display. It's definitely a novel feature they have on here. All right, so we're in the software. This is a 5.1235 controller version. Um, I have the Gen 2 switch opened right here. And for the most part, looks like your standard Unify switch. There's not anything in here, but I did think this was odd that it's missing a temperature sensor. I don't know if the sensor exists somewhere on the board and it's just not picking it up uh, because there's not a software update for it or it doesn't exist at all. So I thought that was a little bit odd. Um, and this is version 4066-10832 is the firmware. It's the latest one as of right now in December of 2019. We'll go over here to config. There are settings on here to use site settings for the screen on or off. So you can disable the screen if you want the front screen brightness, uh, use site settings or override it. Uh, use site settings override, that's the timeout on there. So uh, nice that there's some options that you can do some configuration on, on the particular screen on there. As far as other services go, um, the same support that I've seen on other Unify switches. So they didn't really seem to change anything significant in here. Uh, you look under tools or even under uh, here, there's really nothing added that makes this anything special or standing out unique. I think most of it's a design change in terms of the hardware, less about the software being that much different. Uh, in, in terms of the PoE, and we'll edit one of the PoE ones, we get the PoE options, Mac filtering, switch profiles, just like you can do on other switches. We have PoE on or off, switching mirroring. I don't see an option to force PoE on for passive mode, that does appear to be missing. It does support part isolation, unicast, multi-class, LLDP, topology change notification, and egress rate limiting. So go ahead and cancel out of that. And lastly, we'll take a quick look at their page just to talk about the different models that are out there and which exact one this is. So the quieter is the song and dance they're doing right here. So Gen 1 versus Gen 2 sound level. And the switch is running next to me. Obviously with no fans, there's no noise. Uh, so that's gonna be definitely nice feature for those of you that want this, uh, especially if it's a small lab or running in a closet that's uh, close to your ears <laughs> or 
your home lab especially, you, less noise is great. Uh, you don't need one more thing making a bunch of noise. They're showing off their touchscreen display. This particular model is this one right here, US24 PoE. Then they have the Pro series here that are the higher wattage. This is only 120 watt power budget versus these are 450. And then the USC Pro 48 is gonna be a 660 watt. So definitely you, you bump up, of course, and with that bump, you get the price. This one sells for $379. You jump up to $699, but for $699, you are getting two 10 gig ports on there and you get four uh, SFP Plus ports on this. So for $1,100, you're going to get four 10 gig ports versus the two, and versus you go all the way down here, there's no 10 gig, there's only SFP standard ports on there. And once again, the uh, right here is where they say available at a future software layer three switching capabilities available in a future software release. So that's the one thing about it is, no, it doesn't support it right now in a future software release that doesn't have, if there's a roadmap and someone has a link to it, I Googled, I didn't find, I seen lots of people speculating, but I didn't see anything from Unify Official like what the release date is for it. Maybe I overlooked it. So uh, feel free to leave a comment and uh, let me know if there is a, uh, the release date for when that feature's coming. Uh, this would be pretty cool if it had that type of layer three uh, routing features on there. And uh, maybe I should do a video on why those matter and when you should use them, when you shouldn't, because I know it becomes a little bit of confusion of uh, some of that. But nonetheless, um, being quiet, I do like being the fact that it's better thermally managed, definitely a plus. I have not had enough of these installed yet out in the field. We've talked to a few people that had them. They haven't had any problems with them. Um, but, you know, I trust Unify on this. We've had overall our experience with the Unify hardware has been really solid. Uh, so this is a welcome addition, though, because other than, you know, I've seen some of them get kind of hot. And uh, we had only one of them I can think of ever that had a real weird issue that moving it down to a uh, spacing it fixed the issue by cooling it off a bit. It, but it was kind of hot in that place anyways. And, you know, that can be an issue if uh, you have a server room or a closet where everyone shoved everything and there's no good air circulation. It That's not good for any of the hardware involved because you don't want all the fans running at full tilt to cool off the equipment. Uh, but I'll leave links where you can get this, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.